Hi everybody, I'm Nate Baldwin, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to create a theme in Leonardo. So when we first come to Leonardo, we've got a few options here. We can start an adaptive color theme, we can create color scales for data visualization, or we can visit the color toolbox. Today we're going to go ahead and create a new theme. When we click here, it's going to open up a new workspace for theme creation. Now here we've got the options for create and use, and we start in this create tab. As you can see, there's a few colors already present for us. There's this gray color scale that shows up in a few different swatches in this main region here. So this is where we're previewing the theme that we're creating right now. Color scales are a full value scale of a given color. So for gray here, it goes from black to white. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in another color here, and we're gonna edit this scale to give it a little color. So when we click here, we're gonna open up a detail view for the new color scale. Um, I'm gonna change this name to blue, and we're gonna change the key color to a blue color here. Now, as we do this, we can see a few things in the visualizations. We can see this gradient uh, representation of our color scale, which will help us to see if the saturation or hue needs to adjust as this color gets lighter or darker. And for this one, I think there are some adjustments we can make. So what I'll do is I'm going to start by adding additional key colors. So I want this tint to be a little bit lighter, and I kind of want this hue to move towards the greens a little bit. So I'm just going to pull the hue over, and what we can see happening here is these, the, these dots are illustrating where those key colors are located. So as I change the lightness of this color, it moves its placement on the gradient this color scale is being corrected automatically so that the lightness is uh, evenly distributed. We also can see that this uh, color wheel shows us a few markers for where our key colors are with this little line in between them. And what this shows is in a perceptually uniform color space, the path that this color takes uh, as it changes in hue and saturation. Um, so I'm kind of liking where this is headed, except these mid-tones look a little weird. Uh, this kind of takes a dip, as we can see here. So I'm going to change an interpolation color space here. And when I change these options, uh, we can see how that path will change and the appearance of our color scale changes as well. And there's a few different options that we can choose from. Uh, here, it really doesn't matter too much, as long as what is presented uh, up here is a color that uh, you particularly like or that fits your brand. There's also an av available option for smoothing. So I can turn this on and it'll smooth some of those transitions. Uh, and this is my color scale. So I'll go ahead and save this and go back. And I can add a few more colors. I'll do these real quick here. Just change this to a green. And we'll just change to a few different interpolation spaces here just to see what happens. See those look pretty good. And we'll give a red as well. So we'll come in. Red is a nice, interesting one. As it gets lighter, it tends to look a little more pinkish. So if we want those tints to be a little warmer, we can pull that towards orange a little bit, and that'll just shift a little for us as well. I can... All right, and we'll say that's pretty good. So now what you can see is that each of these color scales is represented in this main area. And all of them have a very similar contrast ratio. You can see this 1.45, 1.46, 1.45. Uh, and what this is doing is these are all being generated based on your lightness stops. So if we come back to this panel here and we go to lightness stops, here is where you're essentially saying what target contrast ratio you want to generate your colors at, or alternatively, what lightness value you'd like these to be. So you can, uh, you can remove these, you can add more if you'd like, and you can change them based on either one of these uh, options. So if I, I know I want something that's 15 to 1, I can just put in a 15 
for the contrast ratio and it'll update here. Or if I know the specific lightness value that I want, say I want this to be a 10 uh, lightness value, so pretty dark, I can do that here. And you'll see the contrast ratio updates as well. So these two inputs are synchronized. Uh, and as you're editing them, they will show you a pass or fail status. So down here at the three to one option here, we can see that's uh, 18 pixels and above pass. But if, I'm, if I go down a little bit, it automatically fails. Uh, same with this 4.54. If I go down to 4.49, it's suddenly the 18 and above and up to pass. So another thing I can do, if I just add in a few more options here. We'll put this here. We'll make this lightness at 90. Uh, one of the things as you're working on this, you may want these swatches to look uh, evenly distributed. And in order to do that, all you have to do is come up to this distribute option. Now you can distribute them by contrast ratios or lightness. Now typically lightness is the one you'll want to choose. We click that option and it will redistribute all of these based on their lightness. So we can see a nice even progression as they get darker. If we want to further evaluate that, we've got a lightness tab here that shows you a preview of the monochromatic version of your colors uh, and then some charts for the contrast and the lightness. So by default, this is a step chart, which helps you with kind of gauging at each step how much more or less the increment is. But you can also switch this to a curve if you want to see uh, another way of visualizing those rates of change. So you can see here the lightness is a nice straight line and the contrast ratio takes on a curve because of that. Now let's go back to our color scales and our theme colors. Uh, as you noticed when we were adding these color scales in we had some way of evaluating um, the different hue and saturation changes. Uh, here, if I pull it back up, you know, you can look at the color wheel and see how hue and saturation are changing. You've got some charts here as well. Uh, and there's also the RGB channels, so you can see how those are changing. Uh, you're also given this lightness stops preview as well. But these charts can be really helpful when you're looking at the theme as a whole. So if we come back to our theme, we've got this chromaticity uh, tab that you can choose. And here, what we're evaluating is uh, the properties of color, um, and for the purposes here, mostly independent from lightness. Our lightnesses are um, pretty much uh, evened out here. Um, there's some wobble to our lines here because of some gamut restrictions and such, but for the most part, it is all following a straight line. And it doesn't really matter here because it's not evaluating the output colors, uh, which are what you see here, the lightness is a straight line for those output swatches. So this is looking at our uh, scales as a whole. So we can look at the theme, uh, the relationships between our blues, greens, reds, and how they appear on a perceptually uniform color wheel. Uh, these dotted lines are to help you see color harmony. If you want to create a palette that is got complementary, split complementary, uh, triadic, uh, analogous, those kind of help you to evaluate the distribution and relative proximity of your colors to one another. And another thing that's interesting about this scale is you're looking at a snapshot uh, of the color scale at a specific lightness. So the color wheel itself, I can make darker or lighter. And as I change the lightness and darkness of the color wheel, it's showing specific color swatches for those color scales at that specific lightness. Uh, so we can see as we're changing that lightness, some of these uh, hues and saturations change at different, at different rates. When you've got a really large palette, that can be helpful to make sure that uh, at any given lightness, the colors are evenly distributed from one another and they don't get too similar. Uh, you can also look at the interpolation paths. If you wanna see what path those color scales take uh, as you're lightening and darkening the, the theme. Uh, or you can look at all of your key colors. So here, rather than changing with the lightness of the color wheel, this just shows you all of the key colors that you've entered and where they plot on a color wheel.
All right, the next thing you can see here is a 3D model. So this gives you the ability to really kind of play around and investigate your colors in a, in a new and exciting way. You get the same kind of information that you do from the charts, but sometimes you're able to identify uh, a little more easily some of the nuance in your color scales. Uh, things like this little zigzag that the green takes, uh, sharp points where hue and saturation change dramatically. And that's helpful when you're really trying to see how, how does the balance of the overall theme look from each of the different scales to one another. Now, all of these charts, including the 3D model, can be in a variety of different color spaces. If we come up to this beaker, you can choose which color space you'd like to evaluate everything in. By default, this uses the uh, cylindrical form of CIE CAM02 UCH, which is a uh, uniform color space. But you can switch to lab if you'd like. You can even look at OK Lab. Um, and if you really want to, you can look at HSL or HSV to see uh, how these plot in a non perceptually uniform color space. And as you make changes to your colors to make them a little more uh, perceptually uniform in these models that can take on some really interesting and unusual shapes. So the recommendation is to just uh, leave it at the default for camo, camo to CH. The other thing you can do here with your themes is the reason that Leonardo uh, has you generate colors based on these color scales as well as, a, as these contrast ratio swatches, is that the purpose is to be adaptive. Right now, what we're looking at is a light theme, but in a lot of cases, you're gonna to need to create a dark mode theme as well. So once you've created your colors, you feel like the color scales look appropriate and you like the swatches that you have, then we can come up to the properties and just change the lightness of the theme's background. So here, by changing the lightness, all of those colors are regenerated to meet the contrast ratios that you defined for your lightness stops, uh, but under the context of uh, different lightnesses of a background color. So as we're creating a dark theme, we may pull this down to about here. And as you're looking at these colors, you may also think that, you know, maybe the contrast could be bumped up a little bit. So you can increase contrast, or alternatively, you can even decrease the contrast a bit as well. So this uniformly increases and decreases the contrast of the colors in your theme. Another thing that you'll notice when you're creating a dark theme or dark mode support is that sometimes the saturation of color can be uh, a little intense. So this red and green um, are, are, are pretty loud in a dark theme environment. So in those situations, you can desaturate your entire theme. So this gives you a little additional tools for modifying these colors based on the environment that they are going to be within without having to redefine absolutely everything. Once we've put together our theme that we like, we can give it a name. Uh, I'm just going to call this my dark theme. And then we can share this uh, with other designers or we can download the UI kit directly. So here we go to share, we're given the option to copy the theme URL and this you can share with other members of your team or you can download the SVG UI kit. Now this is pretty handy. As you click that button, it'll automatically generate an SVG UI kit. So we've got an SVG file here, we can just copy and paste uh, into the design tool of our choice. We can paste this into XD, and suddenly we've got all of these uh, colored rectangles that we can start adding into our uh, document assets panel. Or uh, if you use Figma, the same will work for Figma as well. Just paste that SVG directly into Figma, and you can start using it from there. Now, Leonardo is also meant to be a collaboration tool between designers and engineers. So I've shown you all of the resources for designers to get started on creating your themes. 
But if we come over to the Use tab, this is where we see resources for our engineering team. So the first thing that they are met with is the uh, specific parameters that you have essentially created in Leonardo's web interface for the Leonardo NPM module. So these are the specific colors that you have created, and this is your theme. Uh, the options that you have here, you can change the output format uh, for the colors. These follow CSS color module level four formats, uh, and that will change here. It also updates with any of these parameters that you may change. These values will update as you're making those modifications. Now, if your engineers don't want to use the Leonardo uh, JavaScript module, that's fine. Uh, you can just jump straight to CSS properties uh, if you like. Again, here, if you change these formats, it's auto formatted for you. So your engineers can just choose whichever output they prefer. And even if there was some need to modify this, uh, these values update as you change your theme settings. And then finally, we've got design tokens. Uh, so this follows sort of the flat format from the W3C working group spec. Um, and here, it's just an object with your theme name, a description of your theme, which includes those theme level parameters. That's a lightness of 29%, contrast of 127%, saturation of 88. This is really helpful in keeping track of that information uh, as this uh, data gets used in your system. Then there's the background color, uh, and each of these is given a description of the color's usage. So background color is used for the UI background, and all color contrasts are evaluated against this color. As we start looking at the individual colors of your system, so we'll come down here to blue, so blue 100. This says do not use for UI elements or text. Contrast is 1.38 to 1 against background of 44444. So this data is incredibly valuable. Uh, as we come down here, we can see col this color can be used for UI elements or large text because the contrast is 3.04. And this color can be used for small text because the contrast is 4.75. Uh, this data is also generated uh, on the fly. So as we change things, like here I'll lower this contrast down. Now we've got a whole lot of stuff that used to be usable that now is having data telling us that it is not uh, passing anymore. So again, this data sticks with your colors as they're used in the system so that there's uh, consistency regarding the intent and the contrast and whether or not it should be used for uh, text or other user interface elements. And that's how we can create a basic theme using Leonardo.